Hello everyone, it's Alex. Today we'll look at a real-life operational use case scenario of using Python to create a simple forecast of sales quantities for 13 weeks beyond the existing 52-week horizon. For this, we will use a univariate Excel dataset containing weekly entries representing quantities sold. We will apply simple pre-processing, exploratory data analysis, detection of skewness and stationarity, as well as model training, evaluation, and finally, Python autoregressive forecasting method. As always, please expect to find the link to the source code on my GitHub page in the description below. Now, without further ado, let us jump straight into the code. As always, we begin by importing the necessary libraries. We will need the following. Pandas for handling data in general, matplotlib to create visualizations, and numpy for mathematical operations. Then, from stats models, we will import AR model to enable us autoregressive modeling in general. From sklearn metrics, we will import the mean absolute error, squared error, and R squared score, all of which are commonly used in regression analysis to assess the performance of machine learning model. Next, we will also need the add value function from statsmodels.statTools for the ADF test itself. Then, we will require the skew function from scipy.stats for computing skewness. And finally, the tabulate function from the tabulate library for tabulate formatting. The code begins by reading the file path specified to an Excel file containing sales quantities data and loads it into a pandas data frame called sales data. While the Excel date format is suitable for Excel's internal calculations and formatting, it is not directly compatible with Pandas' full spectrum of data and functionality. Therefore, converting the Excel date native values to Pandas' specific data and format ensures consistent data types extends the range and resolution of dates and enables the use of Pandas powerful daytime operations and functions for time series analysis. In this step of the code, we set the frequency of the data frame index to weekly, in our specific example, starting on Mondays. By setting the index to a weekly frequency, we establish a consistent time interval for our data. This ensures that all observations in the dataset align with the same regular time intervals, allowing for consistent time-based calculations and operations. Weekly frequency is a very common level of temporal aggregation for many business and economic time series related data sources. It allows to capture weekly patterns, trends and seasonality in data when analyzing things like sales, customer behavior, inventory analysis or any other time-dependent variables that might exhibit weekly patterns and or fluctuations. In this section of the code, we create a histogram plot of the sales column using matplotlib library. The resulting plot shows the distribution of sales data values, helping visually assess skewness and symmetry of the data distribution prior to any further analysis.
who further validate our initial assessment of the skewness of the sales quantity values, we move on to calculating the skewness of the sales column using the skew function from the SciPy stats module. The code checks the computed skewness value and prints a corresponding message regarding the degree of symmetry and or skewness of the data, complementing our initial visual assessment. This section of the code performs the augmented Dicky Fuller test for stationarity on the sales column using the add follow function from the statsmodels.tsa.statools module. The ADF test helps determine if a time series is stationary or not. Our code then print the result of the ADF test, including the ADF statistic, p-value, number of observations and critical values. The results are displayed in a formatted table using the tabulate function from the tabulate module. Next, the code interprets the ADF result by comparing the ADF statistic with the critical value at a 5% significance level. Based on the result of the comparison, a corresponding message is then printed regarding the stationarity or non-stationarity, as the case may be, of the data. lines of the code split the sales data into train and test sets to prepare for model training and evaluation. The first 40 weeks of data are assigned to the train sales variable, while the remaining data from week 40 onwards are assigned to the test sales variable. This part of the code iterates over a range of lag values and fits an autoregressive model using the autoreg class from the statsmodels.tsa.ar model module. The loop calculates the prediction performance metrics such as mean absolute error, mean squared error, root mean squared error and R squared for each lag value and selects the lag value that minimizes a combined score. The best lag value found is then stored in the variable called best underscore lags. The code then prints the auto-detected optimal parameter of lags 
for the given data set. This value represents the number of log terms used as predictors in the AR model. In this step, the AR model is fitted using the optimal lags value determined in the previous step. The model is then fit to the trained data using the fit method. Predictions are made on the test data by calling the predict method on the fitted model. Next, metrics that measure the accuracy and goodness of fit of the model's predictions compared to the actual test data are computed to evaluate the model's performance. These then are printed in tabulated form using the tabulate function. In this section, the fitted AR model is used to forecast sales for a future period beyond the existing data horizon of 52 weeks. The predict method is called on the fitted model specifying the start and end indices of the forecast period. This final section of the code creates a figure with two subplots to visualize the actual sales quantities, train and test datasets, and forecasted sales quantities. The first of the subplots displays the existing sales data, train and test datasets, and predicted sales quantities against the test data to provide a visual breakdown of elements of the model. The second support, however, shows the existing sales data along with the forecasted sales quantities only. In everyday scenario, the plot 2 is the one that would be shared with stakeholders and or used in a presentation. As always, we use various formatting options such as access labels, titles, legend and grid lines to enhance the clarity and interpretability of the plots. Overall, our code performs data pre-processing, exploratory data analysis, stationarity testing, model training, evaluation, 
planning and finally forecasting. It provided insights into the data's distribution, skewness, stationarity, model performance and finally visualization of the sales data and forecasted values. In this subset of the code, we create a data frame called forecasted underscore 13 underscore weeks, which will contain forecasted sales values by our AR model captured in the forecast underscore sales array. The forecast underscore sales array is rounded up to the nearest whole number using np.seal function, and it is assigned to the sales column of the data frame. Next, the for i loop is in a list comprehension format adds a date column to the forecasted underscore 13 underscore weeks date frame, labeling each row with a week number from one up to the length of the forecasted sales value where f dot week is short for forecasted week. In the subsequent step, the pd dot concat function concatenates the sales data data frame and the selected columns date and sales from the the forecasted underscore 13 underscore weeks data frame along the vertical axis. This operation appends the forecasted values to the end of the source cells data data frame. Finally, function dot to Excel saves the updated cells data data frame to the Excel file specified by source. The index equals false argument ensures that the index column is not saved to the file. Finally, having successfully implemented the last subset of the code, let us check the content of the source file for the presence of existing 52 weeks worth of sales quantity values together with the appended forecast 13 weeks of sales values at the end. It have worked.